In this video, we will take a look at radical functions. Now, these are all examples of radical functions. So, radical functions are functions that have x underneath a, a root or the radical sign. So, this would be a simple radical function here, y equals the square root of x. And then we could have some different transformations to that function. So, y equals the square root of 2x and then plus 1. And it doesn't necessarily need to just be square roots of functions. We could have cube roots or six roots or or any any roots of the functions. Now in this video we're going to primarily primarily take a look at square roots. So we won't worry about the cube root or the six roots. And for now let's start with just the basic function y equals the square root of x. If we wanted to see what this graph looks like when we graph this function, we would typically start thinking about doing a table of values and selecting some values of x. Now one of the things about a radical function is there's always going to be some restrictions on this number. And that's because on, on x because and that's because we know that we cannot take the square root of negative negative values. So when we think about doing a table of values we might you know select some negative values and maybe select some positive values, but quickly you would see when we try to put negative 4 in here for x, y is equal to the square root of negative 4, this is not going to work. It's undefined, or we could write d and e for does not exist. And the same thing when we try to take the square root of negative 1, it's not going to work. So we need to we need to consider carefully the values of x that will work in this in the uh, equation. And I think we can see here that the only values that are going to work are x values that are greater than or equal to 0, because we cannot square root an expression that's negative. So we'll start to generate some y values now, because we're going to look at some values that are greater than or equal to 0. So the square root of 0 would be 0. The square root of 1 would be 1. And the next x value of 4 that I have here, the square root of 4 would be 2. And then another good point to pick would be 9 because the square root of 9 is 3. And um, the next one would be, of course, the square root of 16, which is 4. So let's do a little sketch here and uh, see what this uh, graph is going to look like. So if we as assume each square here is, is worth 1 unit, then I would start my graph at the point 0, 0. So I'd have a point right there. Then I'd have the point 1, 1. Then I'd have the point 4, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 4. So I'm going to get a graph that's got a bit of a curve here. That heads off in this direction. So no values here that are negative because in this particular graph, X could not be X could not be negative, uh, but any positive X value and zero would generate a a Y value. So we could look at its properties. We could do its domain. We could say the domain of this function is the set of all X values such that X is greater than or equal to zero, and any real number on that domain. And the range is a set of all y values such that y is also greater than or equal to 0, where we have all real numbers on that range, y greater than or equal to 0. Um, other things we can think of the graph as is it does have a, a left endpoint here of 0, 0, and does move to the right forever. And it actually has the shape of a, a half a parabola that would be on its on its side. So if you reflected that about the x-axis, you'd get the other half of the parabola. But um, but that's its its general shape. is looks like looks like half of a parabola on its on its side. So it's important that we understand these properties of the radical function. Make sure that you would know how to sketch the graph of y equals the square root of x, and and know what its domain and range and and general shape looks at, looks like. Now let's look at what happens when we do transformations to 
the graph y equals the square root of x. So let's say we're asked to graph some of these other functions here in these different colors. So we know, as long as we know what this basic y equals root x graph looks like, and I've drawn it again here with some key points on the graph, as long as we know what that graph looks like, and we know what these transformations do, it's simply a matter of applying the transformations to this graph. So we can see here that someone's taken the x value and replaced it with x minus 2. And we should know that any time we replace x with x minus 2, the graph will move to the right 2. So I just need to take each of these points and move them right 2 and connect my dots again. And I have graphed in red the function y equals the square root of x minus 2. Now normally it's a good idea to label your graphs, um, especially when you have more than one graph on, on, on the uh, grid. But I'm using colors, which has, is going to distinguish between which graph is which. Um, but if you don't have different colored pencils or pens, then just make sure you clearly label on your graph which, which graph is, is which. Looking at the green function here now, if someone's replaced the x with x plus 1, so I know one of the transformations, whoops, one of the transformations is going to be left 1. Anytime we replace x with x plus 1, the graph goes left 1. And then there's a little negative 4 tucked on the end here. And of course, if I were to add 4 to both sides of the equation, then my equation would actually look like this. No. And so I can see somebody's replaced the y with y plus 4. Well, whenever we replace y with y plus 4, the effect of that is the graph will move down 4. So I can probably do this all in one step here. Just take each point and move it left 1 and down 4. So if I start at 0, 0, left 1, and down 4 puts it right here. Left 1, down 4. Left 1, down 4 left 1 down 4 and left 1 down 4 and now I can connect my dots okay, and try to draw a smooth curve through the lines I have graphed the green function which was y equals root x plus 1 minus 4 so so far the graphs look identical all we've done is move them around Let's look at the blue graph now and, um, and see what this one looks like. This has got several, several transformations to it, so I'm just going to erase these other ones here. And that's given us just a little bit more, more room in the graph to see all the things we've got to do here. So um, we've got a negative in front here. And this negative is really like a minus y, because I could divide both sides by minus 1. So I need to move, or sorry, reflect. Whoop, we need to learn how to spell here. We need to reflect in the x-axis. That's what that transformation is going to do. Uh, we have a 3 here. Well, if I divide both sides by 3, that would make it like a 1 third y on this side dividing both sides by 3, and when we re replace y with a third y, this would be a vertical expansion by a factor of 3. Somebody's replaced x with a half x. Anytime we replace x with a half x, that would be a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. And then we have a plus 1 on the end here, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to move everything up 1. Because that's really like a y minus 1 when we bring that to the other side. So we've got lots of stuff to do here, and I'm certainly not going to try to do this all in one step. I'm going to, first of all, reflect this in the x-axis. So this point here, 0, 0, will stay there. But this point reflected in x will come down here. Remember, this is your x-axis. This point was 2 above, now it'll be 2 below, 3 above, 3 below, 4 above, 
four below. So I would have a graph that would look something like this. And these are my these are my key points I'm working with right now. Now I need to vertically expand by a factor of three. Vertical is your y values, and we're going to multiply all the y values by three. So this y value was zero. When I multiply that by three, it's still zero. So I'm still there. This point is at minus one. When I multiply that by three, I'm now at minus three. This point was at minus two. Multiply that by three is minus six. This point was minus three. Multiply that by three. I'm now at minus nine. And here this y value was minus four. When I multiply minus four by three, I get minus 12. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now I'm gonna erase these ones. And now our graph looks like this. So I've done the reflectant x. I've vertically expanded by a factor of three. Now I need to horizontally expand by a factor of two. So all of my x values, horizontal is x, I need to double the x values. Here are the x values zero, so we're still zero. The x value of this point was one. The x value is one. So if I double that, this point has moved over here to two. This x value here was at four, and I double that, that's at eight. Six, seven, eight. This x value here was at nine. I double that, that's eighteen. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So this point's now here. So the x values are all getting doubled here. It went from one to two, it went from four to eight, it's gone from nine to eighteen. And this point here was at sixteen, remember, so I'd have to go to thirty two, which I don't Maybe it'll fit. Um, I guess so. I think it'd be right here. So now I'm going to erase these points because I've done done that transformation. Whoop, I just lost my point there. It's right there. And now our last step is to take all of these key points and move them up one. So I have this point here I need to move up one. I have this key point here to move up one. Take all the key points and move them up one. And then nice smooth curve. through our points and we'll erase our other our other points here there we go so the the blue graph here is our final solution after we've reflected in the x-axis vertically expanded by a factor of three horizontally expanded by a factor of two and lastly moved everything up one. And so really, as long as we know the basic graph, the shape of the basic graph, y equals root x, that was the black one here, with its key points, and we apply the transformations to the function, and sometimes we have to do more than one graph if there's lots of different transformations like this one was, um, but eventually we'll have, have one graph, which is our, our final solution. So that's how we can graph radical functions as long as we know our basic graph and the transformation rules.